This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. This is Ask the Aquaponics Guy, preventing you from going down Biscuit Headed Lane. Now, today we have a question from Samuel who sent in a video. And once again, those of you who have questions and you want it featured on Ask the Aquaponics Guy, send in your videos ASAP. Um, and then those questions will be answered and you'll be featured on the show. Samuel from South Africa has sent in his video and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what his question is and what he has to say. Uh, hello, my name is Samuel, Samuel I Um I'm actually making this video from Cameroon in Central Africa. Uh, I've been watching your videos for a while now. Uh, it, it's actually inspired me to actually um, start this uh, aquaponics project that I was, uh, I was wanting to do. But um, I wanted to start on a scale that was manageable and I wanted to do it out of my house. Now, I do have a lot of space. Um, I actually uh, even have a pool uh, that's not being used. And um, I, I just wanted to know if you had any, any um, examples out there of people actually using uh, pools, um, you know, pools in, in, in homes that are not being used anymore. My pool at home here can hold about 30,000 gallons of water, which is way more than I would ever need. Um, I would definitely never fill it up. And I have about 2,000 square feet of land to play with. Any examples you have, any advice uh, would be very helpful. If you have any questions to better understand the project or the space that I'm going to use, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you. Okay, Brother Samuel, thank you once again for submitting your video. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing that I do like about what you said is that you want to start on a small scale. Um, that's the, exactly what I recommend people to do is start on a small scale, test out aquaponics, and really find out what it's about. A lot of people like the concept of it, but when you got to get your feet in the dirt and when you got to really start digging down and, and, and putting things together, then a lot of people find out that, you know what, this is not for me. And if you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a system um, or, or you've put in a lot of work and you find out this is not for you, then you just wasted a lot of your time and you've also wasted a lot of your money. So it's good to start small. I usually recommend people start small, test it out for about a year, uh, understand your seasons, your, your, your growing seasons, understand the patterns, um, and then find out your heating and cooling requirements. Um, and then from there, once you get that down packed, take you about a year, sometimes maybe two years doing it correctly. Um, then from there, you'll be able to scale up. Or unless if you have a lot of money, uh, you can just pay other people to just do it for you right away. Um, and then but that's a different option. Um, so I do like that. Um, and, and that is really good that you're taking that, uh, that step. Um, now, the other thing that you asked me about, which is the main focus of this question or of, of your video is um, if there's any examples of people using pools for the aquaponic system. Absolutely, there are examples of people using pools for the aquaponic system. They're called biscuit headed growers. Absolutely. The reason why I say that is because a pool is not something that you want to be practicing with or trying to establish an aquaponic system, especially, listen to me, especially if you're thinking about getting into this for profit. A pool is not going, a pool is going to work against you. Um, and the reason why I say that is because pools um, are missing, are, are lacking in one fundamental aspect that is required for a proper tank for aquaculture, and that is proper drainage. This is the one thing that the pool is lacking. There's really no bottom drain on the pool uh, where you can allow solids to concentrate and you can rapidly remove them out of the system. That is missing from, this, from, from, from pools. And also, along with that, even if you did have a bottom drain in there, in this pool setup that you have here, um, it's, the shape of it is incorrect. You don't, really, you don't want all these curves and all these turns that you have in the pool looking like a, a, a circuit course off of Mario Kart. You don't want that um, in your system because now you're, you, you really want, that's exactly why aquaculture tanks are designed uh, on a round, uh, as a, a, a round sizing or a round diameter. Um, and that's because it allows the solids to, you know, have a, a vortex motion and allows them to concentrate in the center where they can be quickly removed out and then distributed out for further treatment. So a pool doesn't allow you to do that. And the main reasons, but like I said, if you, if you want to use this, you are able to use this. And I see other people using this for like koi ponds and 
uh, things like that for they they but they're pretty much putting it together the aquaponics system to be aesthetically pre, uh, pleasing and not for effective production. I don't teach aesthetically pre, uh, pleasing here. I teach effective production because I'm not here for an uh, aquaponic beauty pageant. We're here to produce fish and food uh, uh, and vegetables. So that's why I'm I, I don't I'm not going to recommend or one of the other reasons why I'm not going to recommend setting up a pool. Now, uh, like I said, the koi ponds they do that. Um, and you can do that. Yeah, you want to have a nice looking system to set up. But those systems are stocked at very low densities um, where the solids removal is not very important. You're stocking one pound of fish per 50 million gallons. Of course, it's not going to matter how much uh, solids are removed from the system. It's probably better if you keep the solids in there since there's not enough nutrients produced to even grow the plants. And then people adding hydroponic fertilizer and doing the aquaponics with the fish cover up or actually the hydroponics with the fish cover up, excuse me. Um, so that's not what is being taught here. Um, in your system here, if you stock at a very low density, it would almost be defeating the purpose. You would be losing out a, a, a lot of money um, because of that large volume of water. You still have to heat that water. You still have to cool the water. That's going to be at an expense. If you're not growing very many fish in that, in that type of setup, uh, then you're going to be uh, uh, spending and wasting a lot of money on heating and cooling and also managing the water quality um, in that system. So that's something that is counterproductive. Um, and, and if you did stock at the correct stocking densities, you still would have incorrect drainage, incorrect solids removal. So I'm not going to teach and I'm not going to recommend anybody use one of these pools. And I've used pools before, so I'm guilty of it as well. You're trying to cut corners in aquaponics. Trying to cut corners in aquaponics. A lot of people trying to cut corners. There's no corner cutting around here. Either you're going to do a circular round tank, or you can use like an aquarium and uh, uh, use a solids lifting overflow, which is what I use for the NFT system here. Um, uh, and that properly removes solids quick and rapidly out of the system and completely out of the system. Um, but trying to cut corners and, 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 and do things like using pools and, trying to, and, and just trying to use other alternate methods that people uh, in the professional field don't use, there's a reason why people do not use those. So um, I'm not going to recommend that. I'm going to tell you to practice the correct way. And that's what I teach here. Practice, even if you're not doing it for profit, practice as if you were going to do it for profit because it might come a day where you lose your job or you don't have funds. You may have an extra five or 10 grand saved up where you can, you've already been practicing and learning aquaponics as a professional, whether it was hobby or not, hobby or professional. You've already been practicing it the right way. All you need to do is scale it up and start getting out there and learning how to market. That's, what, that's the only thing you need to do. So that's why I teach people that. Because when I started, I learned the biscuit-headed way. I didn't know any better. I didn't know about, um, there's, you, you hardly can find anything on aquaculture already on, on, on YouTube or, or, or just out there on Google or anything. It's hard, all the information is tucked away. It's, it's all tucked away. So I learned the biscuit-headed way, learning trying to be fancy and trying to be cute. And that's not going to get you anywhere in the long run, uh, especially when you're trying to do it for profit. So we're going to stay away from that, get you a round tank, get you an aquarium, especially if it's for a small system. You can get you an aquarium uh, and, and build that up right and, um, and just use the proper, um, the, the, the proper tools and the proper equipment for aquaponics. And that is what I'm going to continue uh, to recommend. So I thank you, um, Samuel, for sending your video. And hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully I steer you in the right direction. Don't, I don't want to see a video of you using that pool. See a video of you using that pool? You know, I can't save every biscuit-headed person, man. But I'm, I'm confident. You, you've been watching long enough. I'm confident you're, you'll take the advice and you won't go that route. Um, like I said, don't, don't, you don't want to experiment trying to do those things that are, are, are proven not to work already. Let's stick to the, the methods that work, and then we can go from there, and then you'll be able to build up. So that is my advice. Stick to, the, to what works. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics preventing all growers from becoming biscuit-headed. Woo! <laughs>